Hi, today is November 16th, 2023, and here are my poems for the day. The first one is poem number 1834 for the year, Piss Arrow. I don't know what is more remarkable, that last week I noticed a stream of piss on the sidewalk that looked like an arrow, or that I am still thinking about it several days later. It may also be odd that I assumed at the time that it was human piss, and I have since concluded that it was probably a dog. Perhaps it was a pointer. Poem number 1835, Wade-In. His favorite thing to do was wade-in at the beach. He'd go down to the shore any chance he got and stand there or sit there wade-in. Just wade-in once the tide would start to come. He'd get out of the water cause he didn't want to get wet. Past his knees. He liked being mostly dry. He liked wading. For him it wasn't about swimming. And it wasn't about catching waves. It was about wading. Maybe one day he'll go deep into the water. Till his feet no longer touch the ground. Maybe one day. He'll swim to a distant shore. But I ain't placing bets on that happening any time soon. Cause every time I ever seen him, he's waiting. Because that's who he is. And that's what he does. And that's how it is. And that's what it is. It's waiting. It's waiting, it's waiting, and it ain't nothing more. Poem number 1836, self-parody. Last Wednesday I wrote a poem called Waitin', and Catherine wrote music for it later that day. Yesterday I finally learned how to play it myself, and I made recordings of me singing it in D minor, which is the key she wrote it in, and then in E minor. And then while I did my laundry, I listened to the recordings over and over again, and later in the day when I was making tea, I started singing Waden instead of Waden, and that led to the self-parody that was the previous poem. I hope that explains everything, and if there are no further questions, I will move on to the next poem. Poem number 1837, Revolutions. Stanley didn't go into work last Friday. He forgot that he was still living in 2023. He woke up last Friday believing it was 40 years from now, when there hadn't been a five-day work week for decades. It was an honest mistake, but because the work of many others at the company was dependent on him being there, many others at the company ended up taking off last Friday, and the world didn't end, so Stanley and his co-workers are taking tomorrow off, too. This is how revolutions begin. And last poem of the day, poem number 1838, Not Taking Tomorrow Off. I'm not taking tomorrow off. I don't work with Stanley. I will do my work, and I will write my poems, and I will record them, and I will send them out. I will do that tomorrow, just as I am doing today, just as I did yesterday, just as I will do the day after tomorrow, backwards into the past, forward into the future, onward and upward, downward and inward, and so on. It was recently suggested to me that I not record, that I go on strike. Well, call me a scab, but I will continue to record even if my cheap or free labor contributes to the decline in the overall value of intellectual property. Personally, I think the world would be better off if everything was cheaper than it is. I'd make less money, but I would also need less money. At least that is the theory I am operating under today. I am tired, and I may think differently tomorrow. And if I do, I will let you know. But regardless, I'm not taking the day off tomorrow. All right, that's it. Thank you. I appreciate you.